Hello, hello everybody and welcome to day five of the Creative Breakthrough Challenge and it's called Enjoy It. And I'm looking like this today. Ah, so how do you feel after completing for some of you and being on the way to completing for other people and even starting for some of you day five or the whole five days? So uh, cheers. Oh, I've got my London mug at the moment. Uh, so I need this. I had my first, um, no, my, my third jab today. Pfizer, Pfizer, Moderna. Moderna, apparently a half dose. So we'll see if I'm half asleep. I'm going to look at your day five contributions. For those of you who have contributed, there are a few. Well done. And, <clears throat> and tell you about some other interesting stuff as well. A little bit about my masterclass, which happens after this challenge in a few days, starting on the 15th of February. But right now, let's get into your wonderful contributions for this day. So day five was uh, a little bit uh, a little bit different. It was a longer video. The video was I let myself go and it was about twice as long as the other videos. And there were a couple of I found touching moments in there when I told you about my favorite book, uh, which is on my shelf somewhere. The dot, the wonderful dot, which is so simple, so pure and so powerful. And I know that some of you were were touched by it as well. And then there was the story of uh, the lady who came to clean a house I used to live in and her getting inspired by me letting her be inspired, which was a, a special moment as well. And <clears throat> so that was fun. Now let me um, go through these. There has been a problem on YouTube with videos. So uh, I would say, sorry, I mean, it's not, not, not my fault. Apparently it's worldwide. YouTube videos which are embedded in pages are not showing up, but I've put a link so that you can actually, you can click on the link here and go to see it uh, directly on YouTube. There's a, there's a link down there in green. Day five was called Enjoy It in my series of days that begin with E, E it. And <clears throat> I, I, I can't even, I'm not even gonna try and remember what they, they all were. Um, or am I? Actually, I am going to, to do that just as a kind of uh, summarizing of everything we did. So the first one was called, I think, Enable It. Or you can get to them all if you go here. You go to this featured section at the top of the groups page and you get to all of the videos. So there you are. The first one was called Enable It. In other words, enable your creativity. Let it out. Turn it on. Uh, <laughs> and uh, light it up and get ready to be creative. And then day two was called Explore It. Now that you've turned on your creativity or reawoken it or rediscovered it, or well, let's see what it can do. Let's see what you are capable of. Day three, Expect It. This was where we started moving into you being creative on a regular basis, for example, daily or weekly. And I asked you to start creating something, however simple, however small, however small amount of time it takes, start creating something now. You know the only day you can do anything? Well, do you know that there's a day, there are seven days of the week and someday isn't one of them? Sunday is, but not someday. So there's only one day you can really do anything and that's today. So. I encourage you to, to start. And there's nowhere in my, my series of videos where I say stop. So if you started, you should still be going. You should now be producing every day and you can contribute your stuff in this group from now on. As a new post, contribute what you've done every day. That's fine. That's what this group is for. And from now on, as I'll be telling you later, this will be a wonderful place to do it. I'm going to, to start up a series of weekly shows in this group and in my photography group and in my writing group. And it'll be an hour of me talking about, yes, my stuff, but of course, and especially your stuff and sometimes other people's stuff that I want to use as examples. So that'll be the creativity show. On Tuesday, it'll be the photography show. And on Thursday, it'll be the writing show. So please 
get your stuff into this group. That's what it's for. So expect it to happen. Expect to be creative. And you absolutely will. Everybody can. Then we had a break day. Very welcome break day. As I have, I have break. I don't have break days on my masterclass that follows this. If you want to, we have break weeks. Oh yeah, <laughs> because we're being so creative. We need break weeks. Um, as everybody appreciated the break day, I think. Then we have day four, and that was exploited. Let's let's use it to influence influence others. Influence. Um, well, maybe influence isn't the right word. I don't know. But get it out there. Share it. And you never know what will happen, except that good things will happen. They always happen. And then the final thing this day that we're going to look at was called enjoy it. OK, you've done the hard work. Relax. Take it easy. Well done. And enjoy the fruits of your efforts. Including on if it's day five, you've done day five, that should be three days worth of creativity in a row for you. If it's not, it doesn't matter. It's OK. But uh, wouldn't it be cool if it was? Wouldn't it be cool if you started a creative habit or routine? Habit sometimes sounds, you know, a bit difficult because it's like, oh, dear, it's a habit. You, We associate habits with bad things, you know, bad habit. Um, I won't, I won't name any in case it's, it's your favorite one. Um, but they tend to be things that we, we break, you know, we want to break the habit or stop the habit. So I've, thanks to somebody, somebody, I can't remember who it was, um, said, Hey, let's not call them habits. Let's try calling them routines. And if it becomes a routine, like brushing your teeth, you don't call brushing your teeth a habit. You call brushing your tooth, teeth a routine, which you do. Most people <laughs> do it. They don't miss it. So why not make creativity a routine? <clears throat> um, um, is this what I want to show you? No, I think this is what I want to show you. Here we go. Day five. And say hello. Of course, say hello. If you're watching this, and I know you are, uh, just say hello in the comments. You might need to say who you are in case I can't see your name because you need to tell my, my software, StreamYard, that you exist, that you are you. But otherwise, uh, say hello. Let me know how you're doing. Have What have you created today? That's what I want to know. What have you created today? Let me know. And if you're able to write to drop a, a picture in there, then let me know that as well. Let me see that. OK, so let's go. Uh, we did it. <laughs> we finished the five day challenge, says uh, Teresa. Well, almost. I still have to create something today. Um, but I have my idea, just need to transfer to paper. My number one takeaway from today's session is really two takeaways. One, just do it, and two, sign it. Okay, I really enjoyed the dot story. I'm gonna make this bigger so that you can actually see what I'm reading. Uh, I think that's okay, isn't it? Yeah, I really enjoyed the dot story. Well, that's great. Yeah, it's a very, very special story for me. Um, <clears throat> So simple yet so true about sh starting, sharing, and encouraging others. Um, I did share my work on my Facebook page, and I was really surprised at the wonderful comments I got um, when I shared the post. I wouldn't have known any of those comments or interest if I hadn't shared my little projects with family and friends. Well done, Teresa, because it's not that easy. I guess I have three takeaways now. Uh, okay, being greedy. Just do it, sign it, and share it. Yeah, there's something about signing it. It sounds like a little thing, but you know, artists sign their work, don't they? They don't want to be anonymous. It's not, I don't think it's through ego. It's simply because it's yours. You know, I mean, you created it. And uh, I think it's, there's something that happens when you sign it. it. It moves you automatically from someone who thinks, well, I do this every now and then to, I'm an artist, I, I create, or I, you know, whatever it is you do, just makes you realize that, uh, hey, they can sign their work, I can sign mine. And um, honestly, there's no difference in quality between your work and anybody else's, because you can't really qualify, if you see what I mean, art. It's, you know, original works have never been created before. No one has done, done anything exactly like them. So why bother comparing? just doesn't, it's pointless. You know, no one has lived your life to be able to produce that piece. So look at it that way. 
Don't bother comparing. It's a waste of time. Be pleased with what you've done. Be happy to share it and enjoy the feedback. Uh, so, Teresa says, I promised to post the finished project, but I wanted to share what I'm working on today. My dream window. That's nice. You know, my photo of the day was of a window as well, funnily enough. That's very cute. And it hasn't, it isn't finished. I see that. So thanks for sharing because it's just as lovely to, to see it at that stage than uh, at any other stage. Artists, maybe of any type, have to decide at what point their creation is done. And it's not that easy because they're creating it. So there's, okay, in some cases it's clear, but in other cases it's not at all clear, especially with painting because you could always add another brush stroke, an imperceptible brush stroke that you wouldn't necessarily see, but, but you added another brush stroke, so it wasn't finished before. And then you could also add another one easily. You can easily add another stroke or another element to any painting really. So you have to decide when your work is finished. And when you've done that, you have to move on. Let it fly of its own wings and do what you want to do. So what I was going to say, it's a bit like a flower or a, a plant. At what point do you say that the plant is finished or at its best? Many people would think that a flower is at its best when it's at its fullest bloom, but it hasn't started to, to shrivel or wilt yet. Well, you can think that if you like, but what about if you thought the most beautiful point of a flower was when it was just breaking out of the green covering and just starting to unfurl its petals? Isn't that a beautiful moment, like birth of the flower, of the petals? Maybe that's the best moment. So sharing this here is just as valuable as sharing any piece which has evolved and got a bit more color, for example. Those are my thoughts. And Teresa, again, ah, here we are. So here it is. You get the feeling I haven't looked at these yet, don't you? Lots and lots of lessons learned. Still fun to do. Lessons. I need need a protractor and ruler. Okay, maybe. <laughs> Learn to use masking tape and masking fluid. So you're probably doing watercolor, I reckon, if you're worried about um, paint seeping over straight lines. Start with base background first and build from there. And four, I discovered my favorite painting brush for little details today. Isn't that funny? Discovered it. I'm sure you had it. It's not like you suddenly, oh, there it is. But you tried something, you thought, this, this is going to be my little details brush. So that's cool. Again, um, if you're watching this in on the replay, hello, or live, hello, leave a comment on anything that comes up for you as you're looking at these, these pictures and, you know, which, why you like them, something you, you are pleased about learning anything that you'd like to put in the comments and then I can uh, I can re react to that or respond to that and it was so nice to see you um, sharing your thoughts on other people's that's so valuable it's something I insist on in my groups and in my master classes we comment on others benevolently we encourage them and we uh, we uh, we say what we like about them and we say what we learn because we learn when we look at other people's this is Beatrice and Beatrice says um, I did the last day of the five-day challenge with my daughter, Roxanne. We chose a painting we had at home, decided to do our representation of it. We haven't forgotten to sign our paintings. Yeah, you've signed them. That's wonderful. Now, Roxanne was very pleased that I share what she did. It was a great moment of complicity and fun. Beautiful. When I asked her preference between playing video games or painting, she answered to me, both. Yeah, let's not, let's not exaggerate because she doesn't see time passing with these two activities. I love doing this creative challenge and I loved having you with us as well. I discovered that I was able to paint and loved the good spirit of the group. Uh, it says that I ever know, maybe, maybe it's the best spirit of a group that she's ever known. Thanks to me. Well, thank me anyway. It's uh, thanks to everybody, of course. And here's Roxanne's painting signed with a fancy R by the looks of it. Okay, I think her second name is begins with B. So it's an R backwards with a B. Very cool signature, Roxanne. Okay, and we're not done with this thread because um, her sister Genevieve actually posted in this thread, 
Oh, oh, here's her painting. Sorry, we haven't finished. And you've got a really cool signature as well. It's almost Japanese with the BEA going down the page in a little square. Lovely. It's a, it's a, a looser approach. Isn't that cool? Two people sitting next to each other, copying the same or being inspired by the same picture, coming up with completely different things. Isn't that wonderful? This one from the daughter, this one from the mother. And they're both wonderful, is the right answer. <laughs> and uh, we did two more, Sunset by the Beach. <laughs> this is by Roxanne, Sunset on the Beach. I love her painting, says her mum. <laughs> I often laugh when people say I love something because, you know, as opposed to saying I hate it. Um, no, I don't, know what, I don't know where I'm going with that. But um, anyway, it's so simple. Just a, a couple of dashes of blue and a, and a circle of orange, of yellow. Bam. Sunset at the beach. Why not? And mine. Colours, connections. So uh, Beatrice is good. And it's signed, look at that, with a date. Um, lots and lots of wiggly lines and connections there. And connections are a wonderful metaphor, you know, for anything you like, really, especially human connection. Her sister Genevieve said, for the last day, I went on with my idea of using things, using things. This time, tea, tea, okay, ah, tea. Um, a shell, flowers, wool, and raw wool from Ireland, no less. I found the raw wool many years ago on a fence in a field, and at last I have used it. So in this picture, things from my travels and my garden. Thanks, Sab, for enabling me to be creative. It has been very liberating. <clears throat> That's wonderful. Look at those little sheep. They're so cute. Is it with real sheep's wool? Real sheep's wool going back onto real sheep flowers there's a kind of a tree and it's tea leaves making up the the hill there with a river it must be a river coming down with a little shell in there oh a wonderful creation there's even some um sketchy stuff in the sky as well Okay, she says, uh, Beatrice says, uh, Genevieve, it's great to come back from holidays with things you use in creations. This one is very lovely. And then they have a kind of sisterly loving um, about how wonderful everything is, which is great. Now we get on to Laurel, Laurel, Laurel. She says, this challenge has surprised me with what my takeaway from it is. We know it's going to be a big one because it's Laurel. And Laurel says, my biggest takeaway is how much I need creativity in my life. Amazing how much, actually. The picture attached does not show anything wonderful yet. It is my plan of how to go about creating the dragon planter for my husband for his birthday. So she's creating some sort of fancy plant thing for her husband. Without this rough sketch for size and approximate quantities, I would have a much harder time creating it. What are you using there? Modeling clay. Okay, there's a rough sketch, and I don't know if she's put the modeling clay where she's going to put it when it's been created or not. Maybe that's what it is, yeah. Um, I, I, I thought I saw a picture of the finished item somewhere. Ronnie from WA as well, big uh, West, uh, Australian contingent, says, inspired by the dot, don't know how the Aborigines do it. And she's done a dot painting. Isn't that fantastic? Um, if you're watching, can you do leave a comment so that I can see if the comments are working? And I'd love to say hello to anybody who is watching. I lived in Australia for a year, which is when I discovered Australian dot type painting. And I still like it. And in fact, I'll show you something in a minute where I have been playing around with dots. Well, kind of, not exactly. Um, but uh, Australian painting in, in any case. Um, love it. Uh, Beatrice says, love the art from the Orig Aborigines. So beautiful, such beautiful creations. And I'm pleased that the dot inspired her. And then Ronnie shares, I think it's not her original art, but uh, some genuine uh, Aboriginal art. 
And I didn't realize it was so intricate, in fact. And all those little dots, there's even these yellow dots look a bit like tadpoles. So many dots. Can you imagine doing that? It's a bit like some of those mandalas that, that we see, just so many tiny dots over and over again. It must take an incredible patience. And that's why the art can be quite relaxing and quite meditative and even uh, therapeutic. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to show you, actually. I think Thomas is about the last one we have here. So I'm going to show you something quickly from... Uh, which I'm, it's a project I'm working on <clears throat> slowly but surely, where I'm going to use, kind of use Aboriginal art, I think. See if I can find it. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so this is, um, it's in my i2c.life website series, and I'm going to paint little square pa paintings. Um, with some, maybe with some Aboriginal animals on. Now, these pictures here are not my pictures. They were taken from somewhere, uh, you can see. And I created a quiz, an Aussie quiz, using uh, their art. I don't think this is necessarily done by Aborigines, but it's in the style of Aboriginal art. And it's wonderful. So many patterns in the animals. So I, I copied these. These are literally somebody else's pictures that I, that I took from somewhere else. Um, but then I decided to do some little cards to, and I call my project the Burnt Poor Project because I'm going to contribute any money that comes from people buying my little squares to help the animals that were displaced and killed. Well, not killed. You can't really help them anymore. But uh, to, to replant trees and things and help the animals which uh, need that as a habitat. So I did some fun little cards. Let's see if I can uh, show you those. And that was my version of a lizard and my version of a roo, kangaroo. Is it coming? There it is. <laughs> That's actually a painting behind which incorporated certain African and Aboriginal art as well from a long, long time ago. Uh, this one is some sort of turtle or tortoise. That's um, an emu. An emu is a bit like an ostrich, but it's a, the Aussie version. Uh, a crocodile, of course, or is it an alligator? I think it's probably a crocodile. Uh, crocodile Dundee, yeah, that must be it. Um, some sort of bird. Um, again, a tortoise or a turtle. And this, I think, is a duck-billed platypus. And finally, the last one is... Um, is it another crocodile or another duck bill platypus, perhaps? Yeah. So that was my, uh, that's me being influenced by Austra Australian art. Okay, let's go back and look at Thomas's thing just to, to finish off here. Thomas did a little video. And here it is coming. Okay, that's interesting. Uh huh. Uh, are you seeing what I'm seeing? <laughs> I think I must have shared the wrong thing because that's uh, that's crazy. Okay, I'm going to share the screen again and try and share the right one this time. There we go. So let's check out Thomas's. Uh, so Thomas says, "What come?" came to my mind while watching the fourth and fifth video is I want to play, have fun with things. I want to see um, where it will lead me to. So today I just made another sketch of something I've had in mind for some weeks. It's a sketch. I'm glad I've chosen hearts as a subject. They're easy to create. And um, he's still looking for his thing. Um, he says probably not hearts. Maybe it's going to be squares or cubes. You know, the kind of thing that you becomes your motive. You you do it so often that you become known for it. Uh, this is quite a cool thing to do, to find something that you, you do a lot. And if you do the same thing a lot, but trying to make it different each time, this can help you develop. It sounds constraining, but in fact, it's quite liberating. Thanks for the five days. You're very welcome. Um, and also, he wants to make some little videos. So here's a video of his. 
And here he's playing with hearts. So he's actually, he's very creative. And he did something, it reminds me of something I might've done at school. You fold the paper into a kind of accordion and you color one side of it one way. And then you turn it around and you've colored the other side a completely different way. But if you open it up, you would see, you would see all of it. That's really cool, you know? It's fun that, <laughs> I don't know, grown-ups spend their time doing this, you know, because I spend my time doing nonsense. And it's nice to see I'm not the only one who likes to do fun, creative things in their free time. So that's great. Right, so that's about it for the, the challenge. <clears throat> um, thank you to everybody for taking part. It's been absolutely wonderful. I am starting, let me bring bring myself back actually for a second. I'm starting um, a series of videos. I'll be doing videos like this. My plan is every Wednesday, I'll do a creativity-based video. So in this group, I'm looking for you to contribute your, your artwork, your creative stuff, anything that you've made with your hands, um, that sort of thing. I do have another group for photography and I'll be doing a live on Tuesday evenings, my evenings. And I have a writing group, which I want to get going again. And I'll be talking about words, could be poetry, short stories, articles, blog posts, memes. And I will be doing that on the Thursday evening. So that's my plan. A lot of lives, a lot of places you can contribute your creative stuff, get involved, and I will appreciate it, give you comments if you want them, and we can have a lot of fun. There'll probably be a theme each week if you want to do it. If you don't, just post what you've, your latest thing. <coughs> so let me just show you, you can also still join the creative challenge if you're just watching this or if you know people who would like to do it, it's gonna run for a couple of weeks up until the masterclass. So you can join now, you can go to this page, which is uh, infinitecreativitynow.com slash five days, infinitecreativitynow.com slash five days and sign up, sign up your friends, Use the coupon code five days and it's free. It'll run for a couple of weeks. So please encourage anyone who would like to do it to join in. And then finally, the masterclass will be starting in about three weeks. And I would love you to take part in this. It's a wonderful masterclass. It lasts for nine weeks and <clears throat> it's an in-depth thing. It's, uh, you know, so it's quite a, quite a biggie. And by the end, you will have created something amazing. Even if you're starting from scratch, you do need to come with an idea. So we're looking for you to come with something you've always wanted to do. I'm not gonna teach you your thing because I don't know what your thing is. In my photography masterclass, it's about photography. In the writing masterclass, it'll be about writing. In the creativity masterclass, you bring your thing. It could be knitting, a knitting project. It could be a musical project. It could be um, a film project. It could be a photography project. Of course, you can do photography. It could be some sort of writing project, a poetry book or, or a series of um, observations. It could be painting, of course. So, or it could be cooking, or it could be dancing. You know, something that you're gonna work on over the nine weeks and finish. You're gonna have a finished item at the end of those nine weeks. That's the commitment, that's the promise, that's the mission for you to finish something. And it's often very difficult to start, very difficult to finish. Continuing can be okay. And I help you through all of those stages. So it's an in-depth masterclass with two parts. The first is you learn everything I know about being creative and taking a project from the idea through to the finished item or series of items. And the second thing is you do a creative project and you finish something. So you learn about creativity and you create. It's like two projects in one. We meet weekly on Zoom and it's just, a, there are videos and Facebook group, of course. Um, you get put into pods so you can share your ideas um, between yourselves as well. Very, very nice, lovely thing. Did it last year, it was wonderful. And got some wonderful creations out of that. So I'm doing it again this year. It'll be even better. So for that, you will have a special price. Um, it says here, um, I, I'm not. I haven't released this page yet. It's not quite ready to go. I will put the address in the in the group, of course. 
Um, there is a, a coupon code early bird, but for you, because you are in this group and well, you took part in the challenge, but anyone in this group who is keen, excited about this masterclass can have an even better price. I'm not quite sure what the code is yet, but it'll take another few uh, tens, tens of euros off the price. So it's very, very worth doing. So that's it, folks. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Thanks for your enthusiasm. Thanks for taking part. Thanks for being creative. And thanks for sharing your genius with the rest of us. And I look forward to seeing you in one of my groups somewhere very, very soon. Bye for now and happy creating.